Okay, so of course, first things first, we gotta first uh, clean off our soldering tip by applying a new coat of solder on and just wiping it across a sponge or um, one of those steel wire thingies if you have that. And uh, secondly, we're going to just first tin our reflector plate. Now, as you can see here, I have my G10 plate still on because I'm too, first of all, well, I'm too lazy to take it off. And second of all, it's FR4, so uh, that means it'll withstand high heat without melting. Um, anyway, let's get started. So go ahead and just uh, touch your iron to the um, copper plate and just melt solder around the area where you're gonna have your tin shield or uh, I'm sorry your coaxial shield so you can pretty much just go back later and just touch your iron to the plate and it will just stick okay so um, as you can see that is the product Hopefully you can see this. Um, I've tinned around the hole that I'm gonna put my coaxial cable into, just like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and tin my coaxial cable as well. Okay, so go ahead and take your iron and just tin across the surface. You don't have to apply too much because you've already tinned your other um, your reflector plate. So just go ahead and whip that around and apply some solder. Okay, cool. Now that you have your uh, coaxial cable tinned up, you can go ahead and uh, take your reflector plate. Just uh, Let's see, stick this part in. Should get a nice fitting sound, and uh, this is actually kind of tricky to do on camera, so you guys are probably not going to see this part. Um, what I'm pretty much doing is I'm just soldering two parts together. You guys don't really need um, help for that. So go ahead and just take your iron and Stick it onto the uh, the shield for the coaxial cable, and just keep it there until solder melts, and you get a good fit. Um, you can apply additional solder if you want it to be more mechanically secure, but it's absolutely not necessary. Oh, and guys, I forgot to mention, uh, you should probably tin your center conductor or center element as well because um, I didn't do that and I'm going to probably have to pay for it by having a bad soldering job here, but it's okay. It's all right. So anyway, you literally just apply solder to um, the center conductor and the... Um, copper. And, uh, I should have probably tinned these, but uh, I think it will work. So go ahead and do this to your own antenna and we will meet back up. So now uh, we're pretty much done with our helical antenna, I know, right? This is a pretty short and straightforward build. Uh, if you just follow all the dimensions correctly, you should have a pretty good working um, helical antenna. But now what we're going to do is we're going to use a multimeter to check continuity to make sure we're not shorting out anything. So what you want to do is um, if you have a multimeter like this, let me just remove the coiling so you guys can all see. Uh, you want to go to this mode right here, um, the one with the kind of, it's, it looks like a sound wave going out. and. Uh, well, it does beep, so I guess that's the whole sound wave thing. Or you want to go to the diode test, which looks something like along this. Wait, there's a glare or something. Can you see? Well, this one and that one, one of those. And uh, it'll pretty much give you a reading if you're, uh, if you're having continuity. So, okay, uh, let me just show you what I mean. If I touch 
uh, the black lead over here and the red lead over here. Oh, hold on, I'm not on the, there we go. That's the continuity test. Okay, uh, so touch that, touch it on the same plate. Uh, yeah, so pretty much if you touch it on the same plate, you're gonna get a beep because um, uh, electricity could flow. So um, pretty much what you wanna check is if your uh, antenna is in contact with the bottom plate, and in my case, it isn't, because uh, as you can see, I'm touching my black lead on the antenna and the red lead on the back plate not connected. So I'm, I'm all good. Uh, usually you're gonna be good if you um, just do a visual inspection, but just to be, just to be absolutely sure, you wanna just uh, check a little bit. Um, so anyway, here is the finished product. Um, Right there, my soldering job isn't the, isn't the best. So make sure you guys tin the um, antenna end as well as your center conductor, just so you can have that nice finish. And uh, I did add some um, extra solder uh, towards the joint just to make it more secure. Um, so uh, at this point, I'm going to add some more hot glue and you guys are welcome to do so as well. If you're using the dowels, make sure you get those, the hot glue in there and uh, make sure it's well supported. But uh, we'll meet back up again. Well guys, uh, I went ahead and applied hot glue across the um, support and the uh, reflector plate. So it's uh, starting to look a little stronger now, even though it's uh, not looking as pretty as before. But that is fine because I'm willing to sacrifice a little beauty for strength. Now, you've pretty much constructed a fully functional um, 5.8 gigahertz helical antenna. Um, some suggestions I, I have is probably just uh, spray on a coat of rust oleum uh, because the uh, copper tends to corrode if left uncleaned and the copper or the rust oleum just really does well does a good job in um, sealing the copper so it doesn't corrode or anything like that just makes your life a little easier and keeps the antenna um, working well uh, so if you found this video useful please uh, hit the subscribe button be uh, above or below I'm not sure um, but uh, it'll be in the annotation um, also, if you can give this video a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And if you have any more additional questions, please feel free to leave it in the um, comment section below or to inbox me. Either way works fine. But uh, I, I prefer the comments, actually, because other people can also see your question and see the solution. So uh, thanks again for tuning in with uh, me, and uh, we'll see you next time.